Hello guys, got a video here for you today on the M3 and in this one what we're going to be doing is making a muzzle brake for the rifle. Firstly though, there are just two things that I want to mention very briefly. The first is that we're still selling the merchandise, so if you're interested in a Sub-12 Air Gunners hat, hoodie or t-shirt, please check the link in the description below. The second thing that I want to mention is that our local range, Pete's Air Gun Farm, is going to be hosting a special night shoot. On the night, a few retailers are going to be showing up and bringing some night vision stuff with them. I know Crawley Surplus Store is going to be bringing a few scopes down with them, so if you're interested in your night vision and want to check it out in a range, it might be something you're interested in. I'll probably mention it again in a future video, but if you want more information, just go to the Pete's Air Gun Farm Facebook page. You'll find it there. Right then, with that all out of the way, we can move on to the work. First thing to do, as always, is to set the stock up in the lathe and face the end. Next thing to do is to prepare the back for a half inch UNF mandrel. This one's going to be prepared slightly different. We can't just whack a half inch UNF in the back. The muzzle brake itself is going to be timed, so it will need to be adjustable on the threads. Don't worry, you'll see exactly what I mean as we walk through it. First thing to do though is to drill the end and then bore it 20 millimeters. This needs to be a real nice finish in there with a nice parallel bore. So to ensure it turns out like that, we're taking nice shallow cuts and using our snap gauges to measure the bore nice and accurately. And then to ensure that there's no micro burrs on anything, we're just coming through with a razor blade and finally deburring the edge. Once that's done, we can turn our attention to the little mandrel that's going to be screwing onto the half inch UNF. To make this little piece, we're using some stainless steel. We've just got that chucked up in the lathe, as you can see there. First thing to do is to face the end, then turn the OD down to 20 millimeters. We're not turning it down to exactly 20 millimeters yet, as this will need to be finished on a half inch UNF mandrel. Once the size is down to rough diameter, we can turn our attention to the end and get it drilled and tapped. As this is stainless, it's fairly tough stuff. So we're coming through first with a center drill, putting a small dot in the end, then coming through with a 10 millimeter pilot drill. Once we've established the pilot bore, we come through with an 11.5 mil drill, which is tapping size for half inch UNF. And then as you can see there, finally coming through with the machine tap and putting the thread in the end. With that all done, we can rough out the final feature in this part, which is the little grub screw groove. Next up, we're going to be making a sort of little add-on piece that I've added to this little design. And then it is a stripper for the very end of the muzzle brake. This is going to be optional, so if we don't want it on or it causes us trouble, we can always take it off. But I thought it'd be a nice little feature to add. But the first thing to do is to turn the OD, then turn down the shaft to 12mm. We will be putting a thread on this very shortly. But before that goes on, we need to create some relief. So we're just turning the front down to around 10 millimeters. And we're doing that with a chamfer tool so we get a nice start to the threads. Once that's done, we can come back with a threading tool and put the M12 by one thread on the end. This will be tapered at a later date, but for now, we're just making a blank so we can turn all the features with an axial alignment to the muzzle brake itself. Next up, to move forward, we need to put a grub screw in the back of our muzzle brake. To do that, I've just got it set up in the mill and we're milling a flat on one side. With the flat milled on, we can then put the hole in the end for an M5 grub screw. In this setup, we're milling the flat as well as drilling the tap in the hole so that we can come back at a later date and retain alignment to the grub screw. So what I basically mean is that the grub screw will always be aligned with the flats on the muzzle brake. But with that done, we can move back over to the lathe and continue work on the half inch UNF little ring. First off, we've got the ring set up on a half inch UNF male mandrel, and we're just putting on all the final external features. I always like to use half inch UNF mandrels where possible, as it ensures that all work done from this point on is concentric and actually aligned with the half inch UNF. This just gives it a much better chance of working on the rifle, as long as the half inch UNF on the rifle is cut squarely. But at this stage, we're just coming through and taking very, very light finishing cuts over the OD of the little adapter here. The muzzle brake wants to push over this little end piece, and there can't be any play between the adapter and the muzzle brake body. And as you can see there, I think we achieved the fit that we wanted. The muzzle brake itself is a little bit of a challenge to get on. You have to get it exactly right for it to push on, and there's absolutely no play between the brake itself and the adapter. 
Next, with the muzzle brake body put onto the adapter, we can install the grub screw and start work on the body itself. First thing we'll do is face the end to length, then drill through with a 4mm pilot drill, taking nice shallow pecks so that the drill doesn't wander off centre, then coming through with a 5.8mm drill and finalising the hole size. The rifle that we're working on is a 177, so a 5.8mm hole in the end gives us a little bit of clearance but not a lot. The stripper that you saw us make a little earlier on will have a smaller hole in it. I did make multiple strippers or stripper blanks at this point and what I've done is I've just drilled each of them a slightly different hole size. I'm going to be experimenting with them in the coming weeks trying to see if they make a difference to accuracy. Next thing we need to do is drill and tap the end to accept the strippers. We're drilling through 11 millimeters which is tapping size for M12 by 1 and then coming through with a nice sharp tap and putting the thread in the end. We could have cut the thread in using a small boring bar but as we don't have a super secure work holding arrangement I thought a tap might be a little safer but you are seeing me grip the part there as to not spin the body of the muzzle brake on the little adapter. With that done we can fit one of the strippers in the end and turn the very outside edge. This will be turned down at a later date but what we're doing at the moment is turning this little spigot point so that we can accurately set it up in the lathe and turn all features concentric with this OD. I did make a few of these off camera and what I'm going to be doing is drilling a different sized hole in each one of them. The one that you're seeing here is drilled out using a 5.5mm drill bit. I did do another at 5mm and another at 6mm. So I'm going to be having a little play around with these and seeing if they make any difference to the accuracy of the rifle. But once I drilled each of them out on the lathe, I left one of them in and mounted a centre into the back of one and turned the OD of the muzzle brake. The OD is going to be 40mm. And since we had a flat on the part, it did provide a nice interrupted cut, which both left a very nice finish and acted as a natural chip breaker. The last thing to do in this setup is to taper the very end. That was simply done by setting the compound slide to 20 degrees and just tapering the back edge. You can see a small reference line and that tells me where the taper needs to finish. The shroud of the M3 is 28mm and obviously we don't want to go any smaller than that otherwise the muzzle brake will look a little silly on the end. So we're tapering it down to 28mm at one end and 40mm at the other. Finally once we've got the taper in we can just 45 the ends and then get the piece moved over to the mill. At this stage I've taken the body of the muzzle brake off of the little adapter ring and I've got it set up on some parallels referencing the flat we milled on earlier. We're just using one of my shell mills to mill the flats down. The final across the flat measurement will be 32mm, so we need to take 4mm off of each side. Once we've got one side done, we can just flip the part over, again referencing the flat side, and then get it milled down to final width. With that done, it's time for a little decorative feature, and to break up the body of the muzzle brakes, so it doesn't look super blocky. We're just coming through with a 16mm wide end mill, just milling a small decorative slot in the top. The last thing to do is remove the waste material from the center of the muzzle brake. We're doing this by drilling through first with an 8mm drill bit just to remove some of the waste material then coming through with a 3 flute 8mm carbide end mill to get the holes roughed out to size. Now I have mentioned it in a previous video but this one is a blunt end mill that I don't mind if it recuts some chips. And as you can see there, the hole does get pretty packed full of chips, although the three flute end mill does do a surprisingly good job of evacuating the chips out of the hole. And even when abused, these end mills do tend to last a fairly long time. But we've just got two holes to mill out, and we're milling all the way through the muzzle brake. But once we've got it all roughed out using the three flute end mill, we can come back with a four flute one and just finish out the walls. Taking a few finishing passes, working our way down first, getting the slots out to final dimension. This end mill was just about 5 or 10 mil too short, do it all in one pass. So I had to split the material up and do it in two. But it did turn out fairly nice and there wasn't a noticeable join between the two levels of the end mill. Right then, that's about it. So what I'll do now is take you back over to the bench and we'll talk about some of the results. Right there goes, so this is the M3 and here is our muzzle brake with the stripper installed in the end. This particular one is a brass one, although I did make a few aluminium ones and all different sizes and such things like that. 
there we have it. End is obviously a nice tight fit on the little adapter that's already fitted to the barrel here. And the end has been deburred so that the threads from the little grub screw there don't interfere with anything. But I'll give you a good look over the device there and you can see all the little features. And to fit the muzzle brake onto the rifle, all we need to do is to push it on the end there. It is an incredibly good fit, so it doesn't go on just by pushing it on. You do need to wiggle it and get it in exactly the right position before it goes on. But once it goes on, it does rotate freely, although I really can't feel any play between the brake itself and the little adapter. The brake itself is obviously rotationally adjustable, so you can rotate it any which way you want. So if you did want to, you could have it off at a random angle, but it always looks best if it's nice and flat. I won't bother getting it all set up just for the video. What I will do though is put the grub screw in the bottom and get that tightened down. The groove itself is offset very, very slightly by about 0.1 or 0.2 of a millimeter. So as the grub screw tightens in, it pushes against that little slot there and forces the muzzle brake up against the shroud end. I did get a chance to briefly test the muzzle brake over the weekend, but there is more testing to be done. But here are the preliminary results. So all of these groups here are done at 50 yards and they're all five shot groups. And these groups here were all done using the 5.5 mil hole in the stripper, which is this brass one here. So if we take a look at them there, and if I bring my pair of calipers out, this is a 177 rifle, so the pellet size is 4.5 millimeters. Take a look at some of the groups there. It's a just under 12 mil group. There was some smaller ones here, so that probably ten and a half, something like that. So a centre to centre group of around six millimetres. Uh, that's really quite good at 50 yards for a sub-12 rifle. There is more worth testing to be done if I'm honest. This was just a brief test. I want to dedicate a full video to testing out the stripper and really try and nail down some observations of what experimenting around with the hole size in the end does to the group size. So whilst the initial results are very good, we will have to wait a little longer till I get more chance to test it fully. But there we have it, so I'll give you a final close up and then that'll be it for this video. Right then, that's pretty much going to do it for this video guys. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.